Hello, everybody, and welcome to Automation Cheat Codes with Red Hat Ansible, One Technology, and Tech Data, or TD Cinex. Uh, today, we're going to have Jory presenting a couple data center cheat codes uh, for everyone to learn and hopefully take back to their environments. Um, you have our contact information. If there are any follow up that you'd like after this with Jory, um, Chad, or the rest of the team, let us know and we will uh, help you out. So with that, Jory, I'm going to hand it off to you. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Matt. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, there you go. You're host now. Oh, thank you. All righty. Can you see my screen? Okay. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so let's talk about Ansible. Um, so first thing I kind of wanted to go through and uh, so just explain, you know, Ansible has, you know, everyone does automation and there's scripts. So Ansible's versions of scripts are actually just called playbooks. Um, and I'm gonna explain how simple a playbook can be to start. So first cheat code, so to say. Um, so I'm gonna just, blatantly go through this playbook, explain every piece of it so you know. So right off the bat, uh, let me zoom in, make sure everyone can see it. That's a little big, but we'll make do. So to start off, these three dashes, they're actually telling the system that this is a YAML file, please read it as such. So just add each uh, playbook is written in YAML, which is yet another markdown language or markup language. I think it's markdown, we can go with that. Um, so the next space is literally just the name. So this name is actually the overarching goal of what you want the playbook to accomplish. So in this case, we're, this is, so today we're going to talk specifically about network automation. So in this case, the name of it is SNMP RO, so read only, read write, string config. And we're going to execute against hosts. And notice the host is Cisco. We're actually going to touch on that in a minute. Um, so gather facts is false. So natively with Ansible, it actually is designed to gather facts about every device it logs into. But certain devices, uh, Ansible only gathers so much facts. Uh, so if it's like a third party device, you might need to use a different type of facts. And uh, we'll go into that in a moment or two. And here's just the task we're gonna run. So all we're doing is ensure the desired SNMP strings are present. So Cisco IOS config, this is a, the module. So it's actually the module that's gonna log into the Cisco sw switches or routers and make changes. And here's the commands we're actually gonna have it run. So here's two. So that's what a playbook looks like. Now to go back for a second, no, if we go to the hosts area. Hosts, so Cisco is actually a group. So I'll actually show you where it is. Here's a host file where everything's configured. So we have a routers group here at the top and then a subgroup called Cisco. And here's all the routers we have in Cisco. So think of Cisco as their first cheat code today. It's gonna actually log into four routers and make changes to them. Now, um, there are more, is more to the host file here. So we do have separated by data centers. So if you wanted to connect to just one set of the data centers routers, you can, or vice versa. And we also have specific variables. We're not gonna go too much into that today. Got to give you the teaser for it. All right, so let's go ahead and run it. Let's have a little fun here. So um, do new terminal. So we are actually in Ansible. Uh, so this is a Linux node. Ansible only run. Ansible control node only runs on a Linux node. So let's actually run this, and we'll see how it actually all works. So I need to just change directory. And we're actually gonna execute the playbook we were, we're just looking at. So this playbook right here, and we're actually gonna run it, but we're gonna do it, run it in a few different ways. So um, one thing that I will point out is this is actually the latest and greatest version of Ansible out there. This is Ansible Automation Platform 2. Um, so if you're familiar with Ansible version one, you'll notice a slight difference in the commands here. So in version one, we would just run Ansible dash playbook in this case, we're actually using what's called Ansible Navigator. This is specific to Red Hat. So 
This syntax is a little different. So we're going to do Ansible Navigator run. We're going to do playbook. And we're going to do dash dash modes, STD out, so standard output. But we're going to do a few different ways. First thing we want to do is let's make sure um, we actually have the right syntax or we're not going to hit errors early. So what we're doing is a dash dash syntax check and a dash V for verbose, meaning give us a little more information. So let's run it. So um, now what this means is if you haven't really got any errors here, so using this is not an error and it just gives you this output, it means there's no errors with the syntax, it should run fine. So we're gonna do the next run. We're actually just gonna backspace up a little bit to check. Now the difference for this one, this is kind of like a dry run. This is basically just to let us look at the output that we're going to get when we actually run it. So let's go ahead and run it real quick. And we'll go through the output together. I'm going to actually scroll up so you can see it all. All right, so it did actually finish. So the biggest thing to note is you'll see there's a lot of extra information here. Um, that it, We're seeing all that because we have this dash V. Um, we would see less if I take it off. But the point is, once it, this is what it's gonna do once it actually gets into the router. And just to prove that this was a dry run and nothing happened, I'm gonna go ahead and actually log in. Don't wanna pull the wool over you or anything. So do a show run, uh, pipe I SNMP. So we can see no new SNMP commands were run. So we can verify that this was a dry run. No, nothing actually happened. So let's actually run it for real. Let's see how it is. So just backspace all those checks and I'm gonna leave off the verbose mode this time. All right, so this is the simple output right here. You now can actually go ahead and just see exactly what it did. So again, here's the name of the place, so which is right up here, this name the task we executed. So we have it four times purely because we hit all four routers. Now, and just for the effort of the title, you know, uh, cheat codes, uh, you saw me SSH in and run show run like that. Um, we're gonna, let's check all four routers real quick, but we're gonna do it in a cheat code style. Allow. So we're doing a quick for loop and it's gonna SSH to each one. And we'll show it off. So as you can tell, we hit router one. We got two new stuff right here. Router two, router three, and router four. So we have all these new SNMP strings. So now here's another thing though. So what if we run this again? You know, you, you don't want it to override anything. You don't want to mess with it. Let me show you what happens. So we're running the same command. We're saying, hey, run this playbook. And so notice the output's changed. So let's go back up real quick, just to review. Right here, it says changed. And also here. So the difference here is it just says, okay. And all that means is, hey, these already exist. We don't need to make any new changes. Uh, we checked it, it's good, we're done. So it's actually logging in and verifying if it even needs to make a change. Now, the next thing to do is what if we, um, I want to add a little more to the playbook. Is that going to break this playbook in any way? It, it's actually not, and we're going to show you how it's done. All right, so we've gone ahead, we've made a change to the playbook, we saved it, and let's run the same command again, and we're just going to add a little more, and then we'll verify it too. All righty, so apparently we've made another change. Something has happened. And let's do that other cheat code we had here. See if something additional showed. And it looks like it did. So we now we logged in four times and we got our new SMP uh, string. So um, that just kind of shows it's just a sh few short commands. You can configure multiple routers or switches in a data center with ease. 
Um, now, specifically, we focused on Cisco today, but you know this works with Arista, Juniper, a multitude of others. I, I say those other two because we do a lot of workshops with those. Um, but there is a multitude of hardware Ansible can connect to, and it doesn't just have to be networking, it can do security as well. Um, so we've gone through, and if we show you the command line, but you know, not everyone's a command line junkie. They don't always go back here. Let me show you the bread and butter of Ansible. Here's where the cheat codes really jump in. So this is Ansible controller. Um, this is formerly known as Tower. So let's go ahead and log in and I'll show you around. Let me just get this uh, password here. All right, so this is Ansible controller. This is the first page you see. This is our dashboard. And so you notice we have six hosts configured. Uh, we've got one inventory and one project. And we're, we're gonna show that off. But this is the first page for a reason. It's so you can come in here and see, okay, what happened last night, the night before? Did all of our jobs run okay? Did they fail? Did they all just run successfully? So just wanna make sure all is well with the world. So just a few different views. Uh, so schedules, this is where you can come and actually schedule jobs. So if you need a job to run every night, just to verify um, your config is the same across the board, you can make one right here. Um, now it's, so workflow approvals. We're not gonna go too deep into this one today, but uh, imagine if you wanted to run a job or if you had someone who may be like a, an analyst who may not understand everything about the hardware they're touching, they need to make a change. They can go ahead and make a change using the playbook, but you can have something in the playbook that says, hey, before it actually execute, I want it approved by someone who knows what they're doing. And that, if assuming you're at the right user, it'll show up here and they can choose to review what they're being changed and say, yay or nay at that point. So to continue down here, so let's go ahead and show the inventories. So this is just workshop inventory. Um, so we're actually gonna just show you the hosts we have configured. So very similar to that host file we showed a little bit ago. So everything there is here. So our IP addresses, the name of the device. So just to show that off. Um, now let's show the credentials. So the credentials are pretty straightforward. You know, these are the credentials we use to actually log into each device. Um, the one awesome thing here is once the credentials created, uh, you can set it to the point where you can make sure nobody accesses it, meaning they can't edit it. They can see the username, but that's about it. But if someone comes in to edit it, they're not able to get the password. It is locked. So you are safe in that regard. And so every password that is put in the credential, it is actually encrypted. So now again, let's uh, actually have some fun here. So here's the template. So here is actually where we create a job. So all the playbooks that we have or have already been pre-created, pre-written, and this is where you actually make the job to execute them. So first things first, uh, we're actually gonna run, we're gonna look at uh, two of them to start. So here's backup network configurations. So just to look at how it looks is, here's the name of the job, pretty simple. And here's the job type run. Now there's two options for this. There's the run and then there's that check. And the check is pretty much the same exact thing that we did earlier with that dash dash check mode. So it'll be a dry run. And the organization, uh, it's purely who owns the projects that we looked at. So who actually can manage all these templates. Um, the inventory, so it's looking at the workshop inventory, so it knows which hosts to look at. And the project, the project is just the collection of all the playbooks we've created. Um, the execution environment, that is a little more complicated, but I'll give you the, uh, the quick version. That is actually our Red Hat's new way of making Ansible controller more scalable. So basically you can create an execution environment which contains all the scripts, collections, and any additional modules you have personally created or downloaded from others. Um, you can actually house them in that. And if you needed to move that whole thing over to a whole other instance, it's very easy. You're just copying pretty much a, a containerized image. So that it's, makes it a little simpler in that regard. And the most importantly, uh, this is the playbook we're gonna run today. It's gonna be network under playbook. So we have two ways to run this. Actually, let me just point this out, credentials. 
uh, it's actually run, got two credentials. This is the SSH credential, so it can actually, actually SSH to the router. And here we have the cloud controller. What that means is it's actually gonna report back to Ansible controller or tower and feed what it, some of the output back into uh, another playbook or whatnot. And you'll, we'll actually get to see that. So uh, there's two ways to run it in here. You can click this launch button or we can go to back to templates here and we can click this rocket ship. So I like to click a rocket ship, so let's go with that. So uh, right here, you know, you got the flashing green light. It is meaning it's running. So uh, looks like it's almost done. So the cool thing about this is, all right, so right here, when you have the green half lit up, that means it is uh, done and it was successful. But the cool thing is you can see how many tasks, how many hosts it touched and how long it took. So that took 16 seconds with a click of a button. And you know, you can go through the output to see exactly what happened. So it actually created a whole backup of everything. So we're actually gonna swing back over here and we're gonna actually look at the backups. So we've got two backups, one's uh, yesterday's and one's today's date. Let's take a quick look. And notice we have two text files, or sorry, four text files, and these are all the backups of the routers. Let's take a look at one of them. Uh, now this is gonna be a, a decent amount of output, so it'll be quick. But here's the entire config of the router. So Ansible went ahead and just created a backup for us, which is wonderful. And so that's that. And you notice that it did all of this and we can go back to the control node and see all the output there. So now here's another fun one. If we go back to templates here. And also if you ever need to re-review the job output, you can actually navigate over to jobs and you can see what was recently ran. So for example, here's the one we just ran. And here's the overview, and you can click and get a whole view of it. So back to templates. Now this one's a fun one. So this is gonna be network banner. So this has a very cool feature from Ansible. So again, it's gonna be a separate playbook, but it's got something additional. It's got what's called a survey. So a survey is just as it sounds. It's gonna ask you questions. And so when you click run, it's gonna prompt me for questions. So we'll, we'll show you the edit view real quick. So it's got two questions. Please enter the banner text and enter the banner type. So um, rather than going too deep into that, let me show you what happens when we run it. So again, let's hit the rocket ship. So here's two texts, enter the banner text. So let's go ahead and write something fun. Um, you know, just for the title, let's go cheat codes. What is it? X, X, O, I don't remember them all. Wow. Let's go with that. And the banner type, login or message of the day. So for testing purposes, let's do login. So when as soon as we log into a router, we'll be able to see it. Oh, it's triangle. I don't know how to make a triangle on the keyboard, so we're not going to do it. And let's launch it. So again, you know, uh, we got this running here. It's logged in and it's added an iOS banner. It's changed four routers. So uh, let's swing back over. Let's log into the router. Let's take a look. Let's make sure no one's lying. Here's my very nice banner um, with just three simple cheat codes there. So now here's the uh, the bread and butter that you know everyone takes Ansible controller and it's the favorite thing. Now imagine uh, having to do a coordinated event, you know, one of these events that you have to bring in a lot of people, you usually have to work in the middle of the night and you're just like, it's, it's a lot of work, it takes time. And sometimes folks can't start their part until another piece is done, but they still have to sit there and wait until it's time to go. It could be early, it could be late. And you know, it's just, people are tired. So we're gonna look at another template. So this is a different type of template. So we're gonna look at this workflow job template. So workflow template is very different. And we're gonna show you the visualizer mode here. 
So this allows us to tie multiple templates together. So for example, let, let me go through the output here. We've got backup network configurations to start. And it's just from there, it's gonna run two uh, other templates here, two other jobs. But there's a big thing to note. If one of these fail, it is going to automatically restore to a previous backup that we can made. So that's kind of where the backup network configurations, that cloud controller um, account comes in. It is actually feeding its output. So it knows where it saved those directories. It's gonna feed it to this template here. So this template now knows about it. So for example, if we edit this template, we've got network automation restore, we click next. Here is the rollback to which date. Notice we have two options. Um, so today this output appeared. So we're gonna roll back to this. So if it fails, we can actually get back and save the day. But now these are very simple tasks to take. So this is obviously not a major event, but just imagine you have to change a config on multiple switches and you know maybe you have a networking team that is specifically only touching routers and switches. And then you got a separate security team that maybe only manages the firewall but you need to do it in a coordinated fashion. Now you can let Ansible say, hey, take a backup of everything, go ahead and start the networking team stuff. And if that is successful, move forward to the firewalls team. So, you know, potentially you can get it down to the point where you don't need anyone up except one person to make sure everything goes okay. Or you can just wait till the morning and see what havoc has been wreaked. But I don't recommend that part. So now we've seen how it all ties together. Let's go ahead and actually see it in action. Let's go ahead and save and exit. And again, back to templates because the right way to do it is always hit a rocket ship. So um, right now, this is just the output. This is overall output. If you want to dig deep as it's running, you have the option to click this and see what happens. Now, some of the, these lines actually do mean something here. So normally these are the same color. And so we got run always on success. So that's not my bad. This should have been the on success as well, but for today it should be okay. So what's gonna happen is if uh, this failed, it would not proceed to these two. And, but luckily these were easy enough changes where it did not have to resort to this one. And the one thing is, um, so I pre-staged the survey here. So let me show it to you. So here's the actual banner, cheat codes brought to you by Ansible Controller. Now, if we come back over here, let's go ahead and exit and go back in, it's already changed it. So we've executed an entire event just for that. And then there's the network user as well. It created some sort of Ansible user. So um, honestly, that is the big stuff that I had. Um, Matt, that, that's honestly all I had to show off unless you want me to go into a, more of a deep tour. Matt, are you there? You got your ears on. Well, we're gonna just show a few things while we wait. So uh, here's a little more. Um, one big thing about Ansible is you can actually control who logs into it and who can execute what playbooks. So here you can make teams. We got Compute T1, Compute T2, got NetAdmin, NetOps. So all these different teams are gonna have different levels of access and they won't be able to necessarily see all the playbooks we have on this main screen as admin. Um, now, I can get those account information and we can actually log in as one of those other users. Give me just one moment. All right, so let's log out as admin. Let's actually 
So if we look in the templates, we have all of these here. So we got 10 of them. Log out. Let's log in as I believe it is the NetOps user. Grab my password again. Me, it doesn't like my password. That is weird. Okay, so now we're going to log back in as admin and we're going to reset it. Oh, that would be why. A little different. I was looking at the group name. Um, I'll go ahead and answer this live. Um, so there's not like a blatant list of modules available for Ansible Automation Platform. Um, so there is a certified collection uh, in Red Hat's Automation Hub. So while we're here, I can show it to you real quick. So that's the Red Hat Certified Collection is what we're getting to right now. Or at least trying to get to. Uh, but there is still a community hub called Ansible Galaxy. And now Ansible Galaxy has a whole bunch more uh, modules and collections available. The one thing about that is not all of them are necessarily certified. So those come with a risk that you'd have to basically certify yourself. And you know, if you're searching for a vendor, it's very easy. You can say right off the bat, take a look. Uh, let's go ahead and search for Trend Micro, one of those security tools. So we have a deep security tool right here. It's got all the information you need about it. And you know what versions. So you can download it right from there. And it actually gives you the command you need to run. So that's Ansible Galaxy Automation Hub. Now, sometimes with Automation Hub, it'll actually say, hey, just go back to Ansible Galaxy and run the same command. And that's OK. It means they've validated that it works. I am haven't found it yet. It's probably a hidden link that I'm not remembering at the moment, so I won't spend too much time. Here it is. There we go. And to show it off here. So there is Ansible Automation Platform. And here's the Automation Hub. So if you have a Red Hat account, you can see this. So here's collections where you'd want to look. Normally it loads, but I think Red Hat's having a little problem right there. So we will come back to that later on. Is there any other questions so far? So um, other things to look at while we're in here is 
we go into hosts, you can go into router one and you actually go to groups and you can find all the groups we've created. So if you go under Cisco, you can see every host related to Cisco. And if you notice in our playbook, we actually called out Cisco specifically. So it knows that all hosts in here and what group they are in, it knows where to look. And projects, again, this is just the place where we have a collection of playbooks. Now, specifically for Tower, it is actually, if you want to store it all somewhere like GitHub, you can actually do that. So it's actually configured to pull from this source control URL and grab anything from that project directory. So that's where it's getting all of its code. And whenever you execute an Ansible template, you can say, hey, make sure to uh, actually get the latest code before running. And you know, we have all these playbooks here. Um, that That is all I have at the moment. Matt, have you returned? All right, we're gonna keep going. Let me come up with my bag of tricks. Okay, so let's swing back over to the command line and show a few new tools that Red Hat came out with. So with Ansible Automation Platform 2, they actually came up with uh, an easier way to execute all these playbooks. Um, so normally it was just Ansible, uh, Dash playbook, and they would run it like that. You know, these commands still exist, and that's fine. You can still run them if you really want to. But this new way, um, which is called Ansible Navigator, so if you run it alone, you actually get a, a essentially a terminal UI, so terminal user interface. So uh, one of the questions we had earlier was what collections are available. So let me show you what collections we actually have already installed and prepared in this environment. So if we follow what it says, this could take a minute because there's a few. So notice we've got quite a few here and these are just uh, prepared for today. And these are also most of the validated ones that Red Hat has. So um, it can log into Amazon AWS. So in case you're not aware, Ansible Automation Platform can integrate with cloud providers, uh, network equipment, security tools, uh, equipment, and so much more. Um, so it also does provisioning. So if you got, you wanna have it set up a VM template, you can. It can provision VMs on the fly, but with a click of the button, you can give it, you can create a survey to provide menu options saying, hey, I only want this to have 10 gigs of RAM or hard drive space. So whatever you want, you can provide options. So that way, when someone fills in that request, they don't have to just start typing in a bunch of numbers. So here we go. You got all your Cisco stuff. We got ASA firewall, the iOS, iOS XR, uh, the Nexus OS, uh, just a cloud common. So meaning it should be trend, should be work in any cloud environment. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know what this one is. Um, IBM Q Radar Sim, so it does work with those products. You can even deploy container images via Kubernetes. And you know, when you see Kubernetes, you, that also does relate back to OpenShift, and it also has a separate one for OpenShift. And one of the big ones we've been hearing more and more about is um, ServiceNow. Um, Ansible Automation Platform complements ServiceNow quite well. Now, ServiceNow can do quite a bit. Um, it is not just a service management um, software and it can run workflows, but it can't log into every system and make all kinds of changes. I mean, it can, but it's limited. This will actually call an Ansible playbook and it can either import something to ServiceNow for you, or you can say ServiceNow run this Ansible playbook and it'll do either way. And here's Trend Micro, which we looked at before. And you know, specifically with Trend Micro, it can log into your deep security manager, or it can even uh, talk to the agents on the PCs. 
And yeah, that is, and we have Red Hat Insights. So if you're not familiar with Red Hat Insights with any Red Hat uh, subscription, so specifically Red Hat Linux, you get insights, no extra charge. It just comes with it. It comes with almost every subscription and it allows you to look at all of your systems and see, hey, these are the vulnerabilities that Red Hat tracks and do you, any of them apply to your systems? And sometimes they will actually come out with fixes. And even if you're feeling happy, it might be an automated fix that you can run from Ansible. Um, last thing to mention on this part is, you know, Ansible does have, can work with Windows. It does have additional just base tools here that are not specific to any vendor. They're just generic and almost every time it has worked for you. But there are the occasional vendors that don't always use these standards. So if we do an escape and go backwards, we can actually, we can basically get around anything you need Ansible wise. So let's go ahead and say config. So this is literally what's in this one file, Etsy Ansible config. We're not gonna go through it because it is a long file. We'll just go ahead and escape. And Ansible docs. So whenever you run these modules, we're not expecting you to know what they all do. There's just no way, you know, it's brand new. You could look on the web, but if you don't have internet access, you can run doc and it'll actually allow you to uh, look up specific module. So in our case, let's do Cisco iOS dot config. So we can go through everything. We can see what it's meant to do, the options that you can run with it. And it's got everything you need. At the very bottom, there should be examples. There we go. So here's a few examples for yourself. So if you're ever unsure, they at least have put something out there. If we go ahead and escape again, uh, if you wanted, you can even run a playbook from here. So this is the easy way. If you don't know the syntax, you don't have to. You can just know the one command and get around for everything. But you do have the option to say, hey, I just, I don't want to dig through all this. I just want to copy and paste. You can say run, you can say doc, from this view as well. So think of this as a cheat code so you don't have to go and dig through everything. Now, I don't do this every day, so my syntax will occasionally be wrong. But Ansible doc, here you go. So Ansible Navigator is the new thing. Uh, the old syntax would have just been Ansible dash doc but Ansible Navigator will interface with all those commands with no problems. And it's the new standard that Red Hat is planning to go with. Um, so as you can see, uh, another thing to look at here is this playbook here. It is pretty simple, nothing crazy. There are more complicated playbooks out here. So to look at just a few. So here's one that's used more for Arista. This is actually configuring VLANs. So basically another one, so resource actually went through and logged in and gathered all the VLANs or gathered these specific VLANs. And we're actually running it. We're taking what we found and uh, implementing it into those devices. And additionally, here's some facts. So if you wanted to just run an audit on your routers and switches and you know there are there are plenty of ways to script this but none as easy as Ansible. I know specifically Perl you can do it but it takes a lot of work to get just get logged into the switch. So for example let's do Ansible dash navigator run the workshop uh, and facts. We're gonna do, and let's show it without the standard mode out for a second. So uh, notice here, this is an Ansible Navigator view, and this is the, simpl the simplified view here. 
uh, we had a progress bar. So it says complete how many tasks, if anything worked out or failed. So that's cool. We have this simple view, but what if we actually want to see the output? So we can actually just type the number that's right here. If you can't see it, it says zero. And we can go through and say, hey, look at all everything that it ran. Now, specifically for this, the standard out mode is actually the best because we actually did something a little more fancy with it. So you'll see debug here, but there's a reason for that. So let me show you. Oops. Let's give this a minute while it finishes. So this is the standard view that you know was more known in Ansible uh, version one. So this is why the standard view is perfect for this playbook, because you can log into each router and say, hey, uh, the iOS version is this, and the serial number is this. So this is what you can use for auditing. You know, this is obviously isn't the prettiest app in the world, but it is readable even going through it. But you can take this and you can expand on it. So specifically here, um, we talked about facts earlier and we, we, we brazed over it. And we said that gather facts up here is a native Ansible thing, but for Cisco, it does need additional help. There are certain things that Ansible just can't do without these extra facts. So it calls this module. And once it gathers all these facts, these variables are filled in automatically. It knows what version it is. It knows what serial number it is. So we are just leveraging what already is in place and was already gathered by this. And there we go. Um, so we've been through pretty much everything here. Matt, are you back? Okay, let's see what else we can find while we're waiting on that. So this is Ansible, as you can tell. So we're using VS Code to run all of this. Um, All right, so here's the initial playbook we ran. So here's a good topic. So here's Jinja. Um, so think of Jinja as uh, templates. They're, they're known as uh, .j2 files. So when someone refers to a Jinja template, it's basically just a file that you're using as a template. So it could be a config file. So in this case, think of this config right here. It is, this is actually a YAML that's copying it in. So it's saying, hey, look at the template file and put it in here as a template. So you're basically just taking a file here, template.j2, and it is actually gonna configure what this file is saying. Now this one's a little more complicated. This is going in to show how complicated Ansible can get. So it is actually adding some loops. You don't have to do this, but this is just one way to do it. So it is going into, it's grabbing the interface and the IP in your nodes, and it's looking at inventory host name. So it's looking it at your inventory and it is configuring each one with the proper interface with this uh, broadcast address. So if we go into hosts, it's going through each of these not just these, it's actually going into our control node too. It's searching through everything to find exactly what we specified in that uh, script, playbook script. And that is all I actually have. 
Um, I just wanted to say thank you all for joining. Matt, are you back? Um, is there any questions or comments? Uh, I'm happy to take folks off mute and make this a little informal. Matt, are you there? Yeah, hey, sorry about that. Hey, um, we're pretty much done here. Um, didn't know if you had any closing remarks? No, I think, uh, I think we're good. I wanna thank everybody for, uh, for jumping on. Uh, thank you, uh, Tech Data Red Hat team for facilitating and uh, we'll follow up if anyone has any questions, don't hesitate. Uh, we'll, get, uh, we'll get contact information so uh, you can get in touch with the right folks. Sure. Thanks, Jory. Thanks, team. No problem. Thanks, Matt. Everyone have a great afternoon.